guys and welcome back to my channel for another Wednesday mystery video. I still don't have a good name for this series so if you literally have any ideas whatsoever please put them down below because Wednesday mystery video just doesn't have a good ring to it. It needs to have a ring, you know? Um, but today's mystery is going to be on the mysterious disappearance of Brandon Swanson. This is a really interesting case. I think it's one that should be quite clear cut and it's really not at all very very interesting so I'll jump into it now. So Brandon Swanson was a 19 year old student from Marshall in Minnesota and he went missing on the 14th of May 2008. So 14th of May 2008 was actually his last day of classes at Minnesota West Community College so he went out with some friends to celebrate just you know he'd finished the year that's what teenagers do you go out and celebrate. So he drove from where he lived in Marshall Minnesota to Canby to go to a party when he got to the party he was rumoured to have, there's like a lot of conflicting views on this, it's thought that he had a couple of beers at the very beginning of the night and then by the time he drove home at like 12, 12.30 he thought he was going to be sober and there's also some people saying they saw him taking shots of whiskey as well, again it's not 100% confirmed so obviously this is in the US, like 19 year olds are not supposed to be drinking so I think a lot of people at the party were very tight lipped about what actually went on at the party because they were scared of getting in trouble but it is thought that Brandon had a couple of drinks, not like completely drunk but he did definitely have a couple of drinks. So a little after midnight Brandon leaves the party to drive back home and then he actually gets his car stuck in a ditch. Now first of all he tries to call some friends who don't answer their phones so then he decides to call his parents. Um, now his parents sort of on and off the phone to him trying to help him out. He is very lost, he has no idea where he is at all. Um, nobody really knows how he ended up getting lost so I'm going to put a map on the screen now. So ca imagine Camby's up here and Marshall is down here. When he called his parents he told them he thought he was very near the town of Lind. Now this is weird because if you think about the map, so Marshall's up here, Camby's sort of here, so it should just be a straight road down Marshall to Camby easy easy journey. Now Lind is actually sort of like here in relation to Marshall so for him to end up in Lind he's actually driven past his town where he needs to be so I'm not sure why in his head that's where he thought he was. Turns out that he was actually near a town called Taunton which again imagine the straight road can be here, Marshall say Taunton's actually around here so it's about 20 miles away from where he was meant to be He'd obviously thought he'd taken this big long journey in Lind and has ended up in Taunton, gone down all these gravelly roads. Um, a lot of people are saying that he took the back roads, the gravel roads, instead of just the straight road because he was scared of being caught by the police and getting a DUI because he had been drinking. Um, Brandon was actually a very sort of well behaved kid from what I've been able to gather, like it wasn't thought of him to do anything illegal or crazy stupid. And we just had a couple of drinks and thought I'm going to take the back roads just in case which was where his problem lies. So when he called his parents for help, obviously they're great parents, they tried to go out on the road and find him. Now because he told them he was near Lind, they were searching far far away from where Brandon actually was. They had lots of calls between 1.54am and 2.17am I think it was and then about 2.20am he called his father and said you know what, I'm getting a bit fed up, I'm just going to walk to the nearest town, I can see the lights, I'm just going to walk there, you meet me at the Lind, I think it was like the public house, or sort of a pub or something in Lind, um, only of course it turns out it wasn't Lind, Brandon was absolutely miles from where he thought he was, so he was on the phone to his father, they were talking, whilst Brandon was walking to where he needed to be, they were just chatting on the phone, um, and Brandon was sort of describing to his dad where he was, whilst his parents were still out searching for him. After Brandon and his father have been chatting on the phone for about 47 minutes, his father hears Brandon exclaim, oh shit, and then he hears a sort of sliding sound, like a bit of like ruffle, and the line, or I don't think the line actually went dead at this point, but I think Brandon wasn't there anymore. Now there's lots of speculations as to what happened here, this isn't thought to be when Brandon actually died, we don't even know if he is dead, he's actually like classified as missing, um, but it's definitely the last that anyone has ever heard of Brandon since 2008. The line actually stayed open I'm pretty sure, so his father was like trying to get Brandon's attention and there was no answer and then his father hung up and tried to keep calling him and there were literally no answers whatsoever. Now his father actually spent hours looking for him after this, they were looking for him until about 6.30am at which point they thought we're going to call the police now, so they called the police and a search that happened. You're probably thinking if Brandon was on the phone to his father and he was drunk or intoxicated then his father would have picked up on that. 
Um, his father said he sounded absolutely fine on the phone, he didn't seem drunk whatsoever, and maybe he's just a really good actor. I know plenty of people who can pass as being completely sober when they are very, very drunk, um, but I don't personally think that's what happened. I don't think Brandon had that much to drink. Um, when Brandon's car was eventually found, which I'll get to in a bit, they did find a pot pipe in his car, which could suggest that he had been smoking weed and was actually stoned instead of drunk. And also you're probably thinking, why didn't Brandon call the police? I can't give you a straight answer to this one. I don't know why his parents didn't call the police and say, Brandon's totally lost, can you find him? Um, some very sad piece of information actually is that if Brandon had called the police, they would have been able to locate him within, I think, 300 feet of his location. It would have been very, very easy for the police to find him if he had just called the police, which I bet his parents had wished Brandon had done now, but at the time they weren't supposed to know this. You probably think the police are there for like life or death emergencies, and Brandon was just a little bit lost at this point, and it don't, I don't know if it occurred to him to call the police and maybe if he was a bit drunk he would have wanted to call the police because he was driving and he would have got in trouble. I think the weather's quite important to mention at this point as well. Um, although this was May, it was May 14th, this was in Minnesota and Minnesota is sort of at the north of America so it does get quite chilly around there. At the time Brandon went missing it was 46 degrees Fahrenheit which is actually 7 degrees Celsius so that's very cold um, and then throughout the night it dropped to 39 degrees Fahrenheit which is three degrees celsius so it was only just above freezing even though it was may i think these it's just a very cold area the following day the police actually managed to locate brandon's car they located his last known cell phone signal and went off that and that's where they found his car in a ditch in taunton when the police found the car actually strangely enough all the doors were open um nobody's ever been able to give a suitable explanation as to why this is Maybe Brandon was searching his car for something and just left, but you'd think if he was leaving his car, he would have shut all the doors and locked it. Um, I don't think the car was too badly damaged. Like Brandon was totally uninjured in the crash. Like He had no injuries whatsoever. He was totally fine. So it can't have been that bad. I think the car just sort of went down a ditch. So I'm assuming Brandon would have shut all the doors and locked them, but they were all open. So rural Minnesota, the area this was, was a very dense woodland and um, there were a lot of dirt tracks, a lot of gravel roads, the woods were very thick, the, there was a river that ran through it called Yellow Medicine River um, and it was a very twisty and turny river, it is very widely believed actually that Brandon fell into the river and drowned, um, it's possible that he just didn't see it, he was walking and he just fell into the river or another explanation is that he actually dropped his phone into the river which is why the signal went dead. They did however extensively extensively search the river his body has never washed up anyway. You'd think if it was in the river, it would have washed up by now. It's like eight, nine years later. Yes, yeah, nine years later now. So his body would have washed up, I reckon, if it was in the river. And the amount of searches they did in that area and in that river, they, I think most likely if that's where he was, he would have been found by now. And anyway, there's literally no evidence to support that is what happened. To be honest, this case is a very difficult one because there is pretty much zero evidence as to what happened to Brandon. Like everything I'm saying in this, it's pretty much just speculation, like after the end of his phone call with his dad, it is a completely dead end. You think it would be quite easy to do a search party in this area. So Brandon left his car and he was walking about 47 minutes when the line went dead. Now the authorities probably would have marked out a sort of two hour walking route around this area and thoroughly searched this area. I don't couldn't find anything saying that's what they did do, but I'm just guessing that it probably is what they did do. Um, and I know for weeks and weeks, probably months afterwards, there were so many search parties, volunteers, everyone who could possibly go and look for Brandon were looking anywhere they could go. They never found any trace of him and you'd think if he had just succumbed to exposure or like hypothermia, he probably would have been found, his body would be somewhere, but it's not. Although no evidence has been found to suggest that there was any criminal activity involved in Brandon's death, Interestingly, he is now on the VICAP list in America. I didn't know what this is, so I did a bit of research. And it's actually the Violent Criminal Apprehension Program. Um, that suggests that there's enough evidence in this case for the authorities to believe that foul play was involved. It, pretty much that list, there's a lot of like violent deaths, a lot of violent murders on that list. It's of a list of people who have gone missing under mysterious circumstances, mostly violent circumstances. So for Brandon to be on that list as well makes me think the authorities definitely think there is something a bit darker going on here. So we move on to the theories and to be honest these aren't the most evolved theories in the world because there's no idea what happened to him. The first theory that I read was actually drug dealers. Um, if Brandon 
was smoking the weed that was found in his car or the, from the pipe that was found in his car. It is possible that he was involved with drug dealers. I personally don't think this one was right. There's a possibility he was followed, which is why he was taking the gravel road to try and get whoever was following him off his back. A drug dealer isn't going to kill somebody over petty amounts of money. I mean, I know it does happen, it definitely happens, and drug dealers do kill people for stupid things. But if he wanted his money, I'm pretty sure a drug dealer just would like scared him a little bit and I don't know. I don't I personally this just doesn't sit right with me. I don't think it was a drug dealer. He was a pretty clean cut kid to be honest. Like he was just doing stuff that every 19 year old in the world does. We've already covered the possibility that he drowned in a river. Definitely could have happened. I personally think because they searched the river so much, I don't think it did happen, but I reckon that is where his cell phone ended up. There's also a lot of people saying maybe he fell into like a cistern or a well um, that he didn't see. It was very dark when he was walking, obviously. It was late at night, he wouldn't have been able to see where he was going. And it was 2008, so I doubt his cell phone had a torch <laughs> setting on it. He could have easily just fallen down a well that wasn't seen. Um, this area is a very rural area. There's a lot of like wells and cisterns and just holes in the ground. And there's a possibility that that is what happened and he fell down one of them. Um, again, I do think when the area was searched, he would have been found. I don't know if they like dug like when they were searching i don't know if they were like looking for a body or looking for an, a live person but i think if there was an open well there would have been obviously disturbance on the ground broken twigs and stuff like that it probably would have been picked up on so you're probably thinking obvious answer is he was murdered now this obviously is something that crosses everyone's mind but the authorities don't think this was something that happened purely because it was a very rural quiet area the chances of brandon like getting lost in this area and coming across a murderer is very very slim. I know a lot of movies portray things like this, people get lost in the woods and then a murderer just happens to be there and picks them up. That isn't what happens in real life, like a murderer usually, or like a serial killer specifically, is very well thought out, very planned. I don't think he, they would be driving down rural roads in Minnesota at three in the morning and happen to pick up a guy who's very lost. If it was a serial killer it would be more planned out than that, if it was just a single murderer then I don't think they would have been able to cover their tracks that well. I don't think there was any criminal activity involved as being a deliberate murder. Now I've got one last theory which I think is very very possibly what happened. I read a hell of a lot of theories online and this is the only one that struck me as being actually able to happen. And it's a bit of a long one so bear with me and let me know what you think down below. So of course when Brandon went missing they deployed sniffer dogs because that is the obvious thing to do. So the sniffer dogs followed a very specific route and from the phone call Brandon had with his father, obviously that was all like documented, it followed pretty much the same route, like Brandon was on the phone describing where he was going to his father and it all seemed like this was the exact route he'd taken. Now at one point the sniffer dogs stop by the edge of the river, jump in and then everyone was like oh okay so Brandon's obviously like fallen into the river and died. But then the sniff dog gets out of the river and it carries on sort of sniffing down the eastern side of the river and it sort of keeps going and eventually it just loses the trail. They actually lost track on a road that led directly to the nearest town which if this is where Brandon went missing that's real real shame because he was so close to finally making it. It was a straight road direct to the nearest town. So it's very sad to think that if he did reach this point and sort of just die from exposure and from hypothermia or just from like just tiredness or if this is where he like just lay down and decided to go to sleep he was so close to making the nearest town it's very sad to think about now something to bear in mind this is a very agricultural area there are a lot of farms around big big farm machinery there's a very big chance that brandon ended up just going for a sleep in one of these fields that was around and in the morning the farmer gets out of his tractor and is ploughing the field and runs into Brandon and kills him by mistake. There's a very big possibility that the fields were just getting ploughed and it ran into Brandon, immediately killed him, probably would have done some pretty bad damage to his body. Um, a lot of farms in America do have undocumented workers, so illegal immigrants, and there's a good chance that the person who did it was an illegal immigrant and just freaked out and buried the body and has hidden it and hasn't said anything for all these years. I do think this is the most likely scenario because there is one farm in that area that was very, very reluctant to let police do searches on their land. Um, I couldn't find any information online as to whether in the end the farm did let them search it or not, um, but I know they definitely put in quite a bit of resistance which could have like let them dispose of the body correctly. Um, I actually read something about maybe the body was ground up and fed to the animals to really get rid of all trace of it. I don't really know how doable that is, um, I don't know if you can ground up a human body, 
Um, but I'm guessing farms have some pretty able machinery. So that is my personal favourite theory. I reckon that's what happened. Um, I don't think there was any like foul play in terms of like being deliberate involved. Um, I just think everything happened in the completely wrong scenario. All the circumstances sucked for Brandon and it just ended really badly for him. If he'd done one thing differently, I reckon the whole night could have ended out completely different and he'd pro probably still be alive. But sometimes all the circumstances are just wrong and accidents happen, I suppose. If you are from the Minnesota area or have any idea whatsoever what happened to Brandon, I will leave a phone number for the Lincoln County Sheriff Department down below. Obviously, only call it if you have like actual tips. This did happen in 2008 and I'm guessing from my target audience on here, you would all be pretty young when this happened. Um, but I'll put it down below just in case you never know who can help um, but it's a very very interesting case and it's one that I would love to see solved because it's just a massive massive mystery I don't think there was any foul play involved to be honest but you never know with these things um, let me know down below what the next mystery you want to see is I do have a couple lined up but let me know and if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel I will be posting these videos here every single Wednesday or I'll be trying at least. I'm doing pretty well so far. This is my third week in a row. Um, thank you so much for watching. Mwah. Bye.